Hey guys, welcome to the Be Better Golf channel. This channel is all about getting better at golf. It's all about vlogging my own personal journey to get better at golf and also highlighting unique and interesting voices in the world of golf. And mostly about just, okay, what does it take to be better? Today is a match that I played against my friend Nick. Recently, I've been seeking out good players in my area to play matches against. Uh, mostly because I think the more good players you play with, the better you, you it's going to make you. You're just going to kind of by osmosis absorb their habits and um, really kind of focus you. You know, if you want to play bad, play with bad players. If you want to play good, play with good players. So I'm playing this match against my friend Nick. In, the, in our first installment that we played about a month ago, I beat Nick uh, one up, even though he made, I think, three birdies. I also made three birdies, uh, but I had one less bogey. And uh, it was match play, and I beat him one up. It was kind of a, a, a surprise victory, but it was very, very good match. Uh, today, on uh, this episode, it's the rematch. So Nick was uh, very eager to play me again and to uh, kind of have a, a comeback match. So here it is. We're playing on the back nine at my home course, Recreation Park in Long Beach, California. Let's get into it and see who wins. All right, so here it is. This is the back nine like I said, of the course near me, just across the street from my house. Here I'm teeing off and I felt good about uh, my kind of preparation and everything, but I did hook that one into the trees. It was bad. You could kind of see a little bit of a hold off there. And the total opposite there. Nick was just really freewheeling there. So Nick bombed it down the right-hand side of the freeway, uh, freeway, right-hand side of the fairway. And uh, I'm in the left rough, in the trees. There's a little tree trouble there, and I have to hit a drawing hook. Uh, so, but, but actually, I was able to get it up in the air enough, and I carried it all the way to the very front of the green. It's a good shot. Really good recovery shot, which I've been working right. on. Right, I've been working on my recovery shots, especially because, uh, you know, sometimes I can drive it all over the place, and I need them if you're going to play okay. So there's Nick. He, w he was a little right at the fairway, and uh, but absolutely crushed it and gave himself a very good angle from a level lie. So here I am, you can see that I, so I hit my just barely onto the front of the green, but this is like a 22 stepper, so that's about a 66 foot putt. And I hit it really well. And you can see I kind of did the Larry Bird fade away there, but I uh, hit it to within six inches and then Nick gave me the putt. So that putt was conceded for four. So Nick is putting for birdie just leaves it on the high side a little bit. So the first hole is all square. Today, uh, one of my one of my viewers, and I take your guys' comments really seriously, liked seeing my face during these, like this little face, the box, face uh, my face in this little box. So I'm gonna try it. So let me know if you guys like this, or you just like the voiceover. It is a little easier just to do the voiceover and not the face, but you guys let me know. I take your uh, suggestions very seriously. So Nick just uh, totally crushed his drive. That was a good There's a forward tee location here, so he got that down to about 55 yards from the green. I'm trying to play a little bit more strategically recently, um, kind of uh, choose my battles with the driver and use it kind of like Isaac Sanchez told me, more like a weapon and, and less like something that I'm using all the time. So I hit three wood there off the tee and actually hit a great three wood shot, and then I hit a very good iron shot. You could see it bouncing there, not too far from the hole. So you can say Nick uh, drove his ball extremely close to the green, and he's been working on his chipping re and pitching recently, and uh, actually landed that right where you think you would want to, but he actually drove it so far that he was uh, his angle was not that great, so it jumped out to quite a ways. That putt is a great example of how I usually lag putt when on fast greens and I'm not really seeing anything. And this green, this hole in particular is a great example of it. You could see it looked like I completely missed that putt line-wise, but I missed it up the high side, so I was able to hit it hard. Yeah, I know. You misread that and that look. Nick uh, hit his putt, but he missed it on the low side. And on a fast screen, when you miss it on a low side, your margin for error for your speed is very difficult. So then he ended up having like a seven foot putt coming back. But uh, Nick's a good putter said, and, and he put it in the hole. So here we are, 142 yard, par three, 
I have a nine iron, and I hit it really well. Uh, I actually uh, hit it so smooth it kind of sprung off the face and jumped. Uh, I'm sitting about 27 feet from the hole, putting downhill. Then Nick uh, good hit a shot. good shot. It was so on line with the pin that I thought it was a lot closer than it actually was. Nick has about a 30 foot putt here. And usually this is the lightning quick putt, but we're playing very early in the morning. And you can see all the dew here on the green. So this lightning quick putt that, that you would think usually turned into a super slow putt. So really slow putt and you're gonna see uh, Nick decided to go ahead and putt anyway and kind of didn't put 100% focus into that uh, second putt. So Nick makes bogey. And uh, after the first two holes, we're all square. So Nick making bogey there means that I did the same thing. I put it up the high side a little bit way too much. That might help my speed control a lot, but it uh, had zero chance of going in. And now I have this very difficult slider to get in, but I took a nice compact backswing an accelerating finish and now I'm one up in the match so uh, feeling very good to be have an advantage on Nick again Nick hit a, a very solid shot uh, really great tempo with his driver everybody was saying that I should uh, try to copy his tempo he hit a pin high to the right of the green and I hit kind of like uh, you can see I was kind of trying to steer that but I hit a very good shot and I hit, uh, even though it was kind of a look, kind of like a, a paced out tempo swing, like kind of like a little, not very aggressive. It actually, uh, uh, the impact was pretty hard. And I'm right on the front fringe. So here's Nick pitching over this bunker, and you can see uh, he got some good loft on that, and he goes about eight feet to the hole. So now I have a very long putt. So I'm on. It's a blue flag, which is in the back, and I have about. Let's see, yeah, about nine feet of fringe to putt through, and then about uh, an, a, another 60 feet, uh, 60 or 70 feet of green. So I really am trying to buckle down and think about how hard to hit this. And again, I hit it, my speed control was wow. great, but I'm, I'm hitting it so far up the high side okay. to help my speed control that I'm leaving myself these longer putts. So the angle here is a little weird, but I was a little short and uh, well to the left of the hole there. Nick makes birdie, so Nick, that's Nick's birdie up and down. This is a 315 yard hole, uh, where, the, where the hole is here with the blue, it's more like 330, because it's huge green. And again, I took a great putt there, so that was a really good putt. I wanted to hit it really soft, and I was thinking like, well there's no way I can leave it Sure if you read, read some of Jeff Magnum's stuff and some other guys that talk about putting, they really want you to die your putt right at the hole uh, because it essentially opens the hole up a lot. So that's what I did there. Right. I really tried to have it just totally be dying around the cup. And if I had hit that any harder, that would have lipped out, but it fell in because it was going so slow. Nick uh, hit a solid drive, but it, he hit it too far straight. He hit it too, he didn't uh, draw it at all, and he ended up in the right rough, kind of with possibly some tree trouble. I hit a, a, a drive that could have had a little bit better balance, but actually I hit it on the same line, line as Nick, but about 20 yards short of him, and I'm fine. So I'm in the rough, but um, not, not very super deep rough, and you can see the ball sitting up quite nicely. So I have three wood from about 260 yards out, and I hit it good. You could hear kind of a, a muffled sound there, but I was shallow enough that it didn't really punish me very much. Here's Nick, and funny thing about this shot. <laughs> I did not see that shot. See, I was thinking that Nick had to hit it low and under that shot and scamper it up, but he can hit the ball so high that he got that seven iron up like extremely fast. And uh, had this shot from 65 yards. So Nick is sitting only about eight feet away for birdie and I am sitting from about 52 yards and did the same thing. I landed it at the hole and it jumped out. This green is kind of hard and it jumped out to be about a 15 foot putt. So here I'm putting for birdie. Same thing, I'm going up the high side and hoping it'll fall. 
that was a great putt, really great putt. I mean, for the same price, it could have gone in, but it didn't. And Nick putts in for birdie. Good birdie. A solid shot, a little closer than eight feet. Solid shot. So here is a 332 yard par four, I think. Yeah. Nick blocked it out to the right, which is a safe play because all down the left hand side are white stakes. I'm hitting hybrid for safety, and you could see how my hips stopped and my hands kept going. And whenever I do that, especially when you go early with your hips, you pull left. So you can see how close I was shooting there to show you how close I was to that dreaded white stake. But I was definitely still in bounds by about three steps. So about nine feet in bounds. So I'm, I'm sitting pretty, but I had almost put that in the practice area, but I'm doing all right. So I have to hit a high shot over that tree and I was thinking about hitting it high. So I kind of let the, let the lag out a little early and uh, put it into the ground behind the ball. I was bad and that cost me some distance. So I'm short of, uh, sitting short of the green. And uh, I am, and the match is all square now. Nick's birdied the last two holes. You can see him hitting from the other fairway. And he actually landed that right close to the hole. It was a little thin, but he landed it just in front of the hole and it, and it caught a little bit of spin. A little bit of thin spin and, and got to about, he has a 10 foot putt. That was a great chip for me, 60 degree wedge hit it high, land, hit my landing spot, and it started rolling out, but it's going uphill, so I didn't quite get it all the way there. So there's Nick's third birdie in a row. So he was one down going to the stretch of birdies, and then uh, I birdied the, the, his first of those birdies uh, as well. So Nick goes to one up in the match as I make that par putt just strictly for pride. Uh, because I haven't made any bogeys so far at this point. I'm one under at this point. So, Nick is one up in the match going into this par three. He's just birdied the last three holes, and he's feeling pretty confident. But as soon as you lose your focus in golf, you can, uh, you can just get bitten. So, and that's what happened to Nick. He uh, just hit a really poor shot uh, a little bit right of the green but it slopes to the right so he actually kicked all the way down to the 18 near the 18th green very far from the hole how bad did you not want the right <laughs> i know i was like the ultimate whip out <laughs> so exactly so i was thinking uh once nick was in such a horrible position you can see where he is here uh i was thinking okay if i put this ball on the middle of the green i win the hole it was just it, it might not work out that way, but that's what I was thinking. And then, uh, so Nick is in a super difficult spot down here that I was in once. And uh, it's just really hard from here because uh, there's not a ton of grass over there. And uh, you just have to hit a perfect shot. And Nick hit just uh, probably the worst shot I've ever seen him hit. And he was really dejected after that. So here's Nick chipping for par and hit just kind of a so-so shot there. So Nick has that for bogey, and I'm lag putting for birdie. So I've kind of been hitting it up the slope all day, and uh, that time I didn't actually, but uh, hit, hit that putt with great weight. Uh, Nick did not give that to me, but once he missed his putt for bogey, and he's tapping in for double bogey, he conceded my putt. So that brings me all square. He just birdied the last three in a row, and then blocked our friend John, really knowledgeable guy about golf, was watching us, and uh, so we had a minor audience here. Nick was very angry about that double bogey and just unleashed the longest drive I've ever seen hit in person on a golf course. It seemed longer on the range, but I've never seen anybody hit a drive this long in person. So I wanted to slow motion, uh, hit, do slow motion with this, and you can see how that back foot was kind of moving backwards, a la Greg Norman. The best drive of your life. And uh, yeah, it was so long. I actually marked this with my uh, my Arcos app. Uh, for, you know, I tagged where we were here on the tee, and then tagged him again where he hit it. He actually hit that 349 yards. It was down the hill, but still, absolutely killed it. So here's Nick. Uh, and I, I hit mine into the right rough and then advanced it up near uh, short of the green. But here's Nick uh, hitting from only 139 yards. I mean, that's a part five. It was something like that. It may, maybe under four two. Nick two putted for birdie, making his fourth birdie in the last five holes. 
and I made a par. I got it up on the green, two putted for par. So they, uh, right, he did not hit, not hit that great. So I'm going into the final hole of this match, one down. And I just hit a great drive, as bad as that, uh, as, as, well, the other, the last drive I hit was not terrible, but it was not great, but that, I really used my lower body well. I'm not going to slow that one down, but I actually need to look at that to, uh, that's a great reference. So here I have 100, 128 yards up the hill, and I actually hit 9-iron, which should go more like 138 or 140 for me. But since it's so far up the hill, uh, it's funny, the thing that I have to remember when I'm uphill like that is actually to check my grip. Because if I have a slightly weak grip when I'm hitting uphill, I'll, I'll just uh, flail it to the right and short. Nick uh, did, not, did not account for the hill as much and came oh, up right pretty well short. So Nick's I'm on the green over there. One up in the match. Nick's chipping for birdies, one up in the match. If he holds this, he'll win. Nick hit just a, such a great chip there. You can see how compact his backswing was. That's a great shot. Accelerating his through swing was. So here I am, putting for, putting for birdie. If I make this, the match is all square. I did not make it. Okay, and, so Nick has uh, this I tapped in for par. To win the match one up. If he misses it, it's all square. Good job, put her there. Thanks. Nice match. Hey guys, thanks for, for watching. Nick made how many birdies? three in a row and then he made another one on 17 so four birdies and I actually still even though he made four birdies I had a chance to tie it on the last hole and uh, I made no bogeys so that's pretty cool shot one under again so the moral of this story is it always pays to play with better players you guys see when I play with you know 10 handicaps I play like a 10 handicap play with a scratch I play, I play like a scratch so thanks for watching be sure to subscribe to this channel and uh, watch my other videos and see you later